Guess what? Guess what? We're going. We're going. Today <laughs> is going to be the best, the best day, day ever. of my young life. We are going to Audley End. That's right, the Audley End House and Gardens, which you may already be slightly familiar with if you, like us, are also complete and utter trash for the Victorian Way series created by English Heritage, featuring the one and only Mrs. Crocum. If you missed that first video, this all came about after Hannah and I posted said video a couple of months ago, in which we attempted to recreate one of Mrs. Crocum's recipes for ginger biscuits, and English Heritage most kindly decided not to sue us after seeing it. In fact, it turns out they're actually really cool and sent us a lot of lovely presents, including the guidebook for Audley End. The decision was final. We had to go. We are on the train on the way to Audley End. My dream. We've been sending each other the Victorian Way Mrs. Crocombe videos for literally a year. We've been sent this guidebook by English Heritage. I brought that with us. I'm, let me just cover your face. Hey. So we're gonna have a, a good read through this. There's the servant's wing and the stables are separate from the house. We are going to be filming in the servant's wing and the stables, obviously, because Mrs. Crocombe is there. We will not be filming in the house because we do not have permission to film in the house. We have gotten permission to film in the other, the living history part, but somebody actually lives in the house, so that's probably not fun for us to be like filming their house. Oh wait, I brought biscuits. You brought the biscuits? I brought the biscuits. The gift of biscuits. If you saw that video, you also may know that they sent a bunch of delicious biscuits. Yeah, we have eaten all of the rest of the biscuits and some of these, but we saved these because it would make nice video feature. These are um, chocolate chunk shortbread. It's never too, it's like 8 a.m. but it's never too good. Yeah. They're really good. Audley End is, in case you're wondering, the perfect day trip from London. Just a quick hour's journey by train, and if you strategically book a super off-peak ticket like we did, is around 18 pounds return. Which, if you are American, you will probably gasp at the cheapness, because honestly, has anyone ever seen an Amtrak ticket for less than $80? Because, anyway. The house is only a bit over a mile from the station, but the website advises not to walk, since it involves main roads with no pavements. Fortunately, there are some nice taxis waiting outside the station, and it's just a couple minutes drive from there. So the house opens at 12, last entry is at 4 o'clock, closing at 5. This site closes at 6. In the kitchens you'll find um, a certain lady that you're waiting to see. <laughs> Enjoy your visit. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We have arrived, as you can see in the back, is the Beautiful grand, site. the one and only Audley End House and Gardens. Thank you, Rebecca. You are Amazing and very so kind. Helpful. This is the most awkward camera angle, I think. I'm really good at walking backwards. <laughs> oh, good. You will be our tour guide today. So, Hannah is genuine, bona fide, Equestrian. 100, 10 out of 10 horse trash. So, oh, I could have just <laughs> said Equestrian. But this is a Bernadette Banner vlog and we call everything trash here. I am horse trash. So, um, there's, there's some horse demonstrations. One is at 11. Which grooming. Is grooming. I will also not be able to tell you much about them because I don't know anything about horses. That's what I'm here for. That's what Hannah's here for. So I hope you're also interested in horses because, whoa, look at that hedge. In case you didn't know, horses are the period accurate version of cars, so. She's mad. Capability Brown designed this landscape and this might be a Capability Brown thing. So that is definitely an iconic hedge. We are presently walking down to the stables, which is a little bit ways down from the house, which is back up over yon, excuse the muggles. Then we will head up to the house again, to the servant's wing, and to see Her Majesty, <laughs> our Amos glorious Crocombe. ladyship, Mrs. Crocombe. So we're just having a nice little country oh, walk beautiful here. beautiful outside. Well, not sunny, beautiful, but it's No, no, cool. no, it's still beautiful. It can be beautiful without being sunny. I wonder what Mrs. Crocombe is doing right now in this very present minute. Do you think she ever thinks about us? I hope so. Hannah um, is is very excited because she's about to go see some horses. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Are you gonna cry as much as when you see Mrs. Croco? No. Never. So we proceeded to have a look at the stables and watch a demonstration on horse grooming, and I feel sort of bad for woefully glossing over this bit, but let's be real, I know most of you are just here to see Mrs. Crocombe, so fear not, nice stable folk, we shall be back in a bit. We're going. We're on, we're making our final descent. We're heading to the to service wing. The service wing for Mrs. We're about Crocombe. to be in the, in the presence of Her Royal Majesty, Her Ladyship, <laughs> Mrs. Avis Crocombe. I'm like having I've hardly been waiting years for this moment. I'm gonna burst into tears. Okay, this is supposedly where the service wing is. Where's the kitchen? Where's the kitchen? Mrs. Crocombe, where are you? We're looking for Mrs. Crocombe. ASMR, Mrs. Crocombe. Kitchen! <gasps> there it is, there it is, there it is. Oh. Good. 
Hello. How are you? Hi. Doing well. What are you making? Well, I'm just doing the food preparation for Mrs. Coker. So I think she's making a curry or something. But she said two onions, oh, one cabbage, and an apple. That's what I do here in the scullery. Food preparation, so descaling the fish, and gutting the animals, skinning them, chopping, peeling, and washing up. What's your name? My name's Annie. Annie, oh, good to meet you. It's very good to meet you too. I've got to keep going. Please yes, yes. Me. This is Marianne, and I'm not Oh, well, hello, Marianne. We've heard very much about you. You find us making our uh, cakes today. Well, and also curry. I'm making a curry. Yesterday, we had a bit of a disaster with the sponge cake, didn't we, Marianne? Yes, Mrs. Brogan. I know you don't want me to talk about it, but sometimes we need to learn from our mistakes, don't we? Sorry, Mrs. Brogan, I don't know what happened. I don't know why I mixed up the salt with the sugar. Oh, no. Well, it happens to everybody. And then we've um, taken off the salt that was on the outside and I'm making nice little squares of some of the sponge cake. The rest of it's going to go into a cabinet pudding. And I'm proving myself, aren't I? You are proving yourself, yes, you are, Marianne. I'm making another one without any salt in it. <laughs> you know, I happened to read the newspaper last year that they managed to transport the fresh meat from Australia to Britain. Wow. Wow. That's technology indeed. Isn't it? It's wonderful to be alive in this year of 1881 with all this advanced well, most of it, not all of it. I'm not sure. Some of the shows that Marianne goes to see. <laughs> what about that? Musical? Yes, the musicals. I'm not sure I've read more of those. And, yes, very good. The gingerbread biscuits. Yes. Yes. Well, and have you attempted any of the others? Not yet, but I, I suppose we'll have to now. We have to. <laughs> Well, um, the sponge cake might not be a bad thing as we are making it today. And also you can see cream drop biscuits here, which are a delight. Some Victoria sandwiches. This is yesterday's sponge cake, which we're going to make into cabinet pudding. So you have to be very careful. Sometimes you may suddenly find that the family call for more food than you're expecting. So you always have to have something just in case. So I'm leaving that just in case. And if needed, I will then decorate it for them. If not, Mr. Lincoln the butler will have it, his keeper has all the trouble with her insights and so while we're quite separate from that I can keep my little empire we can have an empire we can have my little keep my little empire here under relative control although you can't control against Jill Scully mates deciding to go and get married not yet a cook but one day I work hard you never know we need to work hard so that Mrs. Cook can write good things about the way I work Can we just talk for a moment about how cool living history is? I'm sure you've begun to understand this just from watching the Victorian Way videos on YouTube, but Mrs. Crocombe just feels so real and so human being in the room with her in that real 19th century kitchen with the smell of the fire burning in the range. Watching her go about her routine and interact with other members of staff can only be described as time travel. It gives you a whole new appreciation for these mystical figures of the past. Although yes, they are interpretations by modern folk conjectured off of what evidence happens to survive to us today, seeing these figures presented as living, breathing, speaking people really helps to humanize the printed names we see in books, to relate to them in ways that make us care so deeply about them, despite them having died centuries ago, sometimes in relative obscurity. I think the thing that so thrills me about the Mrs. Crocombe videos is how so many people can become so involved in the life of a 19th century servicewoman, simply because we've had the opportunity for her to become a little bit more real to us. Isn't that what we're trying to do here? reconstructing clothes of the past in the hopes of getting to know these people a little bit more intimately. At least, that's what I'm doing here. We're going into the pastry room. Which I don't think 
you possibly have ever seen. No, no, I, I, no. So this is the pastry room, girls. And the reason why we have a separate room is because, let me tell you, the kitchens get very hot. And we've got all of the range going in the roaring fire. It can get very hot. And in here we have these nice slabs of marble for them, for the girls, to roll out their pastry. There's the only downside to this room. This window looks out onto where the footmen uh, oh, yes. have their... So I have learnt to time the girls. I know how long it takes to make pastry. Uh, Here we have some of the cloths that you were looking at. Oh yes. So these are crocheted. I think I was crocheting one and knitting another. People who actually know knitting and crochet, which is a lot of people on the internet, yeah, and it's not know me. The Do you know people will know. It was all of March when I was doing it, and I can't remember what I was doing. What? It looks to me like a standard knitting, to be mm -hmm. honest. So when you're 13, like myself, you start off very low as a scullery maid and then you work your way up. You'll have to come to London, or go to London, and um, find yourself a job there. But it's word of mouth and, and having good references. So an ideal place for a 13 year old girl to start is to work in their, with their local vicar, mm -hmm. in, and then he can write reference, not only a character reference, but a work reference as well. So if That's anybody is interested in getting into kitchen service, mm -hmm. do take note of Mrs. Crocombe's words of wisdom. Um, unless you haven't been performing in a musical. No, That's a lie. So That's so a lie. I'm not lying. Mary Ann would want to talk to you. She does like the musical. It's becoming very popular. That, I'm speechless. <laughs> We've ever scrolled. That was the greatest moment of my life. So we are now exiting the house proper grounds and we are headed back down to the stables. We have stopped to have lunch because that's a thing that happened. Now we are headed back down to the stables where we shall be seeing a demonstration of side saddle. Um, no, side saddle side riding saddle. in period Yes, and dress. she's going to be in a historical riding habit, which I personally am very excited about. I hope you're excited about that too, because I am. isn't that like why you're here for old clothing and stuff? But also Mrs. Crocombe. And Bernadette's irresistible charm. <laughs> That's false. So I didn't get this bit on camera and I'm very, very upset about it, but we walked in to the glorious kitchen. Beautiful. Mrs. Crocombe's beautiful kitchen, which she maintains very nicely. She knew our names. She greeted us by name. I think that that's a moment that's going to stick with me for the rest of my life. It was so special. It was so special. And what we're going to do is we're going to be settling um, the Hogus for side uh, The Braybrooks, who were family in the house in the 1880s, uh, love their horses, they love riding. If uh, one of the uh, nobles of the house wants to go riding, what they will do is they will send a runner from the house down here to the stables. From the time that runner leaves the house, from when the order is given, uh, you have 12 minutes, groups of 12 minutes, to get the horse saddled and at the front ready to go. So the horse needs to be there. It can't be arriving as the lady is coming down to go riding. It needs to be there waiting and ready. Realistically, you have less than 12 minutes to saddle up. So as you can deduce probably, we then proceeded back down to the stables to have a slightly more attentive visit. Then it was back up to the house, and the house proper this time. We were given permission to film in the coal gallery where we met Mrs. Warwick, who we do hear passing mention of in the video series, so it was really cool to get to meet her in person. Now I had to admonish one of our um, housemates this morning, and I'm afraid to say, I told her to make sure that all the rooms that our guests are staying in have rose scented soap. Now, does this smell like any rose you've ever smelled? Yes, you have a smell of that. What do you think? <laughs> yes, yeah. it's not good, is it? I'm afraid to say these girls from the country need a deal of instruction and discipline before they give anyone any satisfaction. So, you've all got the right candles, I dare say. No one's got a candle like that, have they? Yeah, it's for the use of servants, you see. It's got animal fat in it. Paraffin wax is what you require, is it not? It's the benefit of having the coal bunkers here in the coal gallery, so that we can make sure the hot water is piping hot. Think of those poor beleaguered housemaids in other country houses, trudging up from the ground, all the way up the flights of stairs with those heavy loads. It's so much more convenient to have the coal place up here. Although, of course, I always complain bitterly every time it's delivered, for it does create a deal of dirt and dust, does it not? So when the coal comes through this window here, I have to make sure the family are not in residence, because otherwise it would be most deleterious to their health. You can see the hoist here, 
the lead is attached to the hooks, and so the wicker baskets are, are witched out, basket after basket, lasting several days to fill our bunkers. We do have cold bunkers outside the service yard, of course, to supply the coal to the kitchens, laundry, dairy, and the lower, the lower rooms on the ground floor. Learn anyone from London? Anybody yes. <laughs> If you go to the theatre, you might well see the Savoy Theatre. They have electric lights. Mm. You see? Well, as you can see, we are now on our way, departing from Audley End, headed back Sadly. to the station. That was a fantastic day. That was really amazing. I mean, aside from. One of my from, favorite places I've been. Yes. The house itself was just beautiful. So the many ceilings. Paintings. Just like look, look up at all of the ceilings. They're really, if and when you come to visit Audley End, which you should because it's really cool. Pro tip, do be sure to get a business card from the taxi yes. driver because if we had not asked for how do we get back uh, and didn't have that way. phone number, we probably wouldn't have known what to do. So As that's a New Yorker's advice on getting taxis in the middle of the countryside in England. It's like we like walked back in time. Yeah, like this little no, it actually day. is like just being in the kitchen because it's not just Mrs. Crocombe, but it's Annie Chase and it's Marianne and you the know, maids. you've got all of the, the, the people, the living history people and even, you know, upstairs in the house, we got to meet Mrs. Warwick. Mrs. Warwick is awesome and she's very underrated. She knows a lot about soap. Yeah, I don't think we actually met her ever on the TV series, but TV series, YouTube series, <laughs> uh, but she's really cool. I would watch it as a so TV series. So definitely to come say hi to Mrs. Warwick as well if you come, if and when you come. And we are now passing out of the gate. Oh, sadly back out to the road. And thus concludes our magical trip to Audley End. But Audley End is just the beginning. English Heritage are a fantastic charity, responsible not just for maintaining over 400 historical sites around the UK, but also working passionately to bring history to life. Through, of course, their brilliant living history demonstrations and opportunities for hands-on experience at sites, featuring real figures from history like Mrs. Crocom and Mrs. Warwick. All this done, of course, by working from actual historical evidence and written accounts, which if you've watched any video on my channel for more than circa seven seconds, you will know is my complete and utter driving life force. All of this is made possible by the generous support of the public, so next time you're in the UK, I highly recommend having a visit to one or more of their sites. And if you live in the UK, you have absolutely no excuse. So thank you for coming along on this adventure, and now it's time for the present, at least, to return to the 21st century. Until next time.